Nga, yan bago bago po namin ibigay sa iyo yung uh, screen ay ipakilala po namin muna ang ating lecturer ngayong umaga. Tinatawagan po natin si Ma'am Ma'am Ging para ipakilala ang ano ating tagapagturo. Ayan, good morning sa lahat. Ang ating lecturer ngayong umagang ito ay isang mabait na estudyante before batch 2018. Ayan. Uh, kung meron lang, nung panahon na yon, kung meron lang kagaya ng panahon ninyo na nakatanggap ng mga awards, ito na yung isa sa mga tatanggap ng awards. Very studious, uh, very obedient na anak, and member ng SAD. Alam niyo yung SAD? Hindi niyo alam no. Ah, sige, ipapaalam ko sa inyo. Single, available, and desirable. Ayan, yan si Ma'am Roma. Ayan. Uh, Ma'am Roma para ginog from Flori Florida Blanca Church. Ayan. I-welcome natin ating speaker, ayon lecturer sa umagang ito. President I'm giving you the screen, Ma'am Roma. Okay po. Good morning everyone. Magandang, uma magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat po sa napakagandang introduction. <laughs> Ngayon po lang nalaman din yung sad. <laughs> Ayan. Sa ating IGBI family, sa lahat po ng mga dear IGBI students natin dyan and mga pastors, Bible women, mga workers natin, good morning po and even sa mga nandito sa Zoom, good morning po sa ating lahat and even sa mga nanonood sa live. Good morning. I want this lecture to be engaging, okay? Please uh, say your response. I want to hear your voices. You can use also your gestures, your facial expressions. Nakikita ko naman po kayo kahit pa pa, no? <laughs> Para hindi tayo ma-boring and ma-break natin yung distance or physical barrier natin ngayon. Again, good morning! <laughs> Ay, wala akong naririnig. Good morning po. Good morning! Wow! Nakaka-encourage naman yung mga greetings po ninyo kasi kinakabahan talaga ako. <laughs> And para matapos na ito, at sabi nga ni Pastor Judy, makatulog na tayo ng maayos. <laughs> Umpisahan na po natin ito. Let me share my screen po. For a while. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, thank you for your response. And simulan po natin ito sa isang panalangin. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we thank you so much for this time, for this opportunity to be one of your lecturers sa uh, aming Spiritual Emphasis 2021. Maraming maraming salamat po dahil sama-sama kami ngayon na mag-aaral at matututo ng inyong mga salita. We're praying, Lord, na kayo po ang manguna sa inyong tagapagsalita. Kayo po ang siyang magbigay ng sapat na talino, karunungan at lakas sa kanya, Lord. Please ang kalooban niyo lamang po ang siyang masabi niya, mabanggit ng mga labi niya, Panginoon. And please prepare niyo po ang puso't isipan ng mga makikinig, especially ng mga IGBI students. May we all be strengthened and empowered using this lecture, Ama. Sa inyo po ang lahat ng papurit pasasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus sa aming dakilang tagapagligtas. May I hear an Amen! Okay, thank you po. So ngayon, before we really start the lecture, I want to see if you have your Bibles with you, notebook and pen. Pwede bang pakitaas? Bible book, notebook and pen. Wow, very good naman talaga ang ating mga Bible students dyan. And even sa mga nanonood po sa atin ngayon, please get your Bibles, notebook and pen kasi napakahalaga that na... Um, Kapag nano, nakikinig tayo, nanonood tayo ng mga ganitong gawain, let us take down notes. <laughs> Kasi hindi natin talaga mapagkakatiwalaan yung memory natin. Palagi natin nakakalimutan yung mga napag-aaralan natin. Okay, so as we start, I want to ask you, are you all ready? Okay, if you are ready, according to studies po kasi, we learn best when we are ready. So, if you are not ready, please, <laughs> maglihip na po tayo sa Zoom, <laughs> sabay ganun. Please, umalis na po tayo, sabay ganun. Pero, frankly speaking, 
as we start, please let us be ready. Let us prepare our hearts and mind kasi wala rin pong saysay kapag nandito tayo at hindi man din naman tayo makikinig ng maayos, hindi tayo handa para matuto at tanggapin ang salita ng Lord. So please tell yourself and your mga katabi, <laughs> please say, I'm ready! I'm ready! Okay, thank you so much. So our topic or lecture number three, for this emphasis is breaking the mental barriers to achieve greater goals. Can you say it? Breaking the mental barriers to achieve greater goals. Okay, very good. So we will be talking about or we will be studying the book of Nehemiah. Okay, so ang ating focus po ngayon ay mga mental barriers. And yesterday, we had the physical barriers. Ngayon, mental. <laughs> Sabi ko nga pabiro sa sarili ko, naku, mental. Hindi kaya tayo mapunta sa mental nito. Okay, so mental barriers po ang ating pag-uusapan ngayon. And to start this lecture, I want you to look at this one. I want to draw a beautiful a healthy line between overthinking and underthinking. Can you say it? Overthinking. Underthinking. Underthinking. Okay. So, habang pinag-uusapan natin yung mind, yung mental barriers, I want to draw a healthy and beautiful line between these two. Overthinking and underthinking. Ano nga bang sinasabing overthinking? When we say overthinking, it's the art of creating a lot of problems that were not really true or real. Okay, ulitin ko, when you overthink, Sometimes or most of the times, you are just creating your own problems na hindi naman totoo. Yan po yung tingnan natin. What about underthinking? Kabaligtaran naman niya ito. Underthinking, I am not thinking at all. <laughs> Meron ba't sa atin yan? Yung sige lang siya lang sige, hindi niya pinag-iisipan ng mabuti. Okay, so kapag overthinking po, marami kang iniisip na bagay, na stress ka, na depress ka, underthinking naman, hindi mo siya pinag-iisipan. At ito po ang gusto kong i-point out, na nakakalungkot and even nakakatakot sa mga sarili natin bilang mga Christians. When we overthink, we think about our future, we think about the, our jobs, we think about our families, money, lahat ng mga bagay-bagay pinag-iisipan natin. But, ito yung nakakalungkot. We always underthink about the Lord. Yun yung gusto kong ma-point out dito. We always underthink about the Lord on who He is, on what He, he is He doing, at we underthink as well the ministry of the Lord. Please, Pakinggan niyo ako ng mabuti as I speak about to you this reality. Ang dami mong pinag-iisipan na ibang bagay labas sa Lord, but when it comes to the Lord and His ministry, underthinking yung ginagawa natin. So, yung beautiful or healthy line po between these two, ay yung tinatawag nating proper thinking. At alam naman natin yan, wala, marami tayong mga verses sa Bible about our thoughts especially Philippians 4.8, okay? And kapag sinabing overthinking, okay, sabi dito, sa overthinking, hindi ka makago. Dahil ang dami mong naiisip na mga hindrances, mga barriers. On the other side, sa underthinking, sige, go ka lang ng go. Kahit hindi ka handa, bara lang ng bara. Ayan po yung something na dapat tingnan natin na mabuti. Isipin nating mabuti. Nag-overthink ba ako? O nag underthink ba ako? Wala ba ako doon sa thin, healthy, beautiful line, line ng proper thinking? So sa introduction na to, please let us avoid overthinking and underthinking. Are, are you getting the point? Yes. Okay, thank you so much po. So right now, I want who ask how are you okay pero bago pala yan bakit na ba 
importante na yung mga thoughts po natin ay maayos. Because sabi ng Hebrews 4.12, sa last part niya, the Lord is discerning our thoughts and intentions of the heart. And ang sabi pa sa Proverbs 24.9, the thought of a fool is sin. It is impossible to fully please God without ruling our thoughts. Madalas kasi sa atin, we are just thinking about Ay, Lord, please, i-correct nyo po, i-purify nyo po ang puso ko, ang motibo ko. But then we neglect the one of the important part. How about our thoughts? Okay? Ang sabi po ng Hebrews 4.12, hindi lang intentions ng mga heart natin. Ang dinidiscern, ang tinetest ng Lord, kundi ang, our, ang ating mga thoughts. Lahat ng mga iniisip natin. And... Maraming mga beses na mali yung naiisip natin, negative yung naiisip natin. We become foolish and the thought of sin uh, and the thought of a fool is a sin. Okay? Kailangan tingnan po natin ito na mabigat. Kapag po palang naiisip natin yan ng mga hindi magaganda, hindi tama, hindi kalugod-lugod sa Lord, already a sin na yan kahit nasa isip pa lang natin. Uulitin ko, it is impossible to fully please God without ruling our thoughts. Kaya po ganyan kay importante din ang ating mental aspect. Kaya binibreak natin ngayon ng mental barriers na, na meron tayo. Pakisabi mo nga sa katabi mo, please rule your thoughts. Thank you so much. Oh, and now, sabi ko nga kanina, gusto ko yung ko yung kumustahin. Okay? I want to ask how were you through this diagnostic test? <laughs> Magte-test kayo pero hindi naman siya seryosong test kundi in a form of a game. Okay? Let's play put a, put a finger down. Can you please put your fingers up? Walong daliri, daliri. <laughs> Walong daliri lang po. Okay, walong daliri lang. And let us uh, test, examine our thoughts. Kung nangyayari ba to sa atin. Kung relatable ang nakasulat sa screen and experience mo, please be true to yourself. Be honest about it. And just put a finger down kung talagang nararanasan mo yan. Are you ready? Okay, ready na. So put a finger down. Una, if you can shut off your brain to fall asleep at night. <laughs> Ito na yung dahil nag-overthink ka, naranasan mo na hindi ka makatulog. <laughs> hindi ko naman sinasabing palagi, kahit minsan lang, please. <laughs> minsan naranasan mo hindi ka makatulog kasi ang dami mong iniisip. The next one, oh no, you have difficulty concentrating on the task set before you. Hindi ka makafocus. <laughs> Put a finger down kung hindi ka makafocus minsan dahil sa mga iniisip mo. Okay? The third one naman, you tend to relieve the embarrassing moments of your life. Nako, hanggang ngayon naaalala mo pa rin yung kahiya-hiya. <laughs> Nakakahiyang mga naranasan mo noon. Okay? Next one, the fourth one is you keep bringing up the same stuff over and over. Naaalala mo, hindi lang yung mga embarrassing moments, pati yung mga ibang mga bagay pa. For example, mga negative, mga masaklap na nangyari sa past mo. Bina brought up mo pa ulit. Okay? The next one, the fifth one, you tend to procrastinate and spend time doing unnecessary things. Okay? Sino po dito yan? <laughs> Napaprocrastinate ka lang, hindi ka na gumagalaw. Imbes na gawin mo to, ibang bagay na lang ginagawa mo na hindi naman dapat. <laughs> Number six, you're too wired and anxious. Na-stress ka, ang dami mong iniisip. Okay? Sino po yan dyan? Next naman, you always think of the negativities rather than the positive ones. Sino dito yung negative thinker natin? Okay? And lastly, you tend to focus on the future and sa past 
rather than living presently. <laughs> Ulitin ko, you tend to focus on the future or sa past rather than living presently. Sino po yung mga yan dyan? Okay, may I see your fingers? Sino po dyan ang may pinakamarami pa? <laughs> okay, meron bang naka 7, 6, 5, 4? Sino po dyan? Okay, sino naman yung pinakakonte? <laughs> sino po yung pinakakonte? Hmm? I can see, <laughs> I can hear you all as well. Sino po yung pinakakonte? Wag na kayong mahiya. <laughs> okay. Sino naman ang pinakamarami? Five. Five. Sino po ang naka-five? Five. Ilan po? Marami bang naka-five? Hindi ko po makita, sorry. Ilan po yung naka-five? Ilan daw naka-five? <laughs> Ang dami ata ha. Six po, six. Six? <laughs> I am thinking of giving prize. Pero ang dami nyo naman. <laughs> Parang hindi yata kaya ng budget. <laughs> okay, I will I will still think about it. Ha? Kailangan kong gumamit ng proper thinking <laughs> kung magbibigay ba ako ng prize or hindi. So, thank you so much and congratulations for uh, joining or pa, sa pagsali ninyo sa ating Put a Finger Down test. Kung mataas man o maraming fingers meron ka, congratulations. Kung konti na lang ang fingers mo, congratulations pa din. And this lecture is for you. Marami man o konti yung fingers na meron ka. So please listen attentively. So ngayon po, I want to show you ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin kapag sinabing mental barrier. Please say mental barrier. Okay, kanina pa natin sinasabi yung mental barrier, no? Ano nga po ba itong mental barrier na sinasabi? Mental barrier is a limiting belief or assumption that we have about ourselves in regards to our ability, potential, self-worth, and etc. I want to point this out, our dear uh, Bible students, limiting belief, assumption. Kapag may mental barrier, especially logically talaga kapag barrier, linil, limil, merong limitations, okay? Merong hadlang. And one of that, yung mental barrier na meron tayo. Itong limitation na to, belief siya or assumption, okay? Inasyum mo lang, pinaniwalaan mo lang. Pero kadalasan hindi naman totoo, hindi naman dapat. Okay, it can be about your ability, your potential, your self-worth, and etc. Lahat ng mga naiisip mong negatibo na yan about yourself and even other about other people, it will limit you. Ang sabi po dito sa nakasulat pa, okay, wait. It's just from doing something or acting on something. Hindi ka makagalaw. Hindi mo magawa ang gawain ng Lord dahil meron kang mental barrier. Uulitin ko, kapag hindi mo magawa ang gawain ng Lord na dapat gagawin mo naman talaga dapat para sa kalwalhatian niya, merong barrier, maaring isa dyan, meron ko pong tinatawag na mental barrier. Okay? So we have to be careful about it. And ano ba yung mga examples nitong mental barriers? Please sana makarelate kayo. Maybe... First one, you think of your ability. Merong lack of ability na tinatawag. You, you may say, I could never get up in front of the people and take the lead. Masyado kong mahina. Hindi ko kaya yan. Sounds family ba? <laughs> Sounds familiar. Ay, nakaliwit ako sabihin. Kaya pala pinapakuha ng notebook, ball pen at pen. You will have your quiz afterwards. Okay? Ulitin ko. You will have your quiz afterwards, ha? First, lack of ability. Nasabi mo na ba sa sarili mo na hindi ko kaya yung bagay na yan? Mental barrier yan. Lack of support. Madalas social support. Minsan, financial. Madalas din, financial, no? 
Sabi mo, nobody believes in me. Parang lang kay Moses din, no? I might as well put the idea back in the drawer. Hindi ko na lang itutuloy. Wala namang naniniwala, wala namang sumusuporta sa akin, eh. Hindi nyo naman ako tutulungan, eh. Nag-iisa lang ako. <laughs> Yung mga drama po natin sa buhay. Okay? Next, lack of knowledge. You may say, what do I have to offer? Meron ba akong ma-offer sa ating Lord? Hindi naman sapat yung meron ako, yung knowledge ko. Why don't they ask someone else na lang? Iba na lang, huwag ako. <laughs> Nararanasan niyo po ba yan? Huwag ako, lack of knowledge meron ako. And, last example na nilagay ko dito, lack of trust. Hindi puro sa sarili mo ngayon, maybe sa Lord, lack of trust, and even sa other people. Uy, he is so quiet and shy. What a loner. I don't want him on my team. Ayoko siyang kasangga. Ayoko siyang kapartner. Ayoko siyang makaministry. Maybe there are thoughts about other people na mental barriers then. So those are some. Some lang po yan, kundi marami pa tayong mental barriers. And please, mahirap and dangerous yung mga mental barriers na yan talagang ipaparalyze ka para hindi ka makagalaw sa ministry. So we have to rule our thoughts. Stop overthinking. Stop underthinking as well. But get that beautiful line between those two of unproper, properly thinking about those things. So our object is introduction pa lang po yun. Please spare me some time if mag-overtime tayo. No? Please, please, please. So, on that, on that introduction about our topic, we have two objectives here. First, we want to break mental barriers. Paano nga ba may mababreak ang mental barriers? And the last and second one, to achieve greater goals. So, hinati ko po yung ating topic. Our objectives to break mental barriers and to achieve greater goals. Ang tanong, gusto niyo bang ma-break ang mga mental barriers natin? Yes! Gusto niyo rin bang ma-achieve ng greater goals para sa Lord? Okay, so sana po ay makinig tayong mabuti at matuto tayo dito sa lecture na ito. First thing first, how to break mental barriers. Ano nga ba natin masisira ang mga mental barriers sa pinag-usapan natin kanina, yung definition niya and even the examples of these mental barriers? And I want you to think about this one first. Meron kasi famous line, quotation. Ang sabi ni Martin Luther King Jr., Let's build bridges, not walls. Okay, let's build bridges, not walls, ang sabi ni Martin Luther. Pero why? Bakit parang opposite siya, kabaligtaran siya ng book of Nehemiah na ito yung foundation natin ngayon? Because Nehemiah is about the book of rebuilding walls of Jerusalem. Bakit parang contradictory itong dalawang ito? So let's reconcile po ang dalawang thoughts na to. So how to break mental barriers? First one, think of rebuilding your walls. Ulitin ko, think of rebuilding your walls. Why? It is not always about building bridges. Tama at totoo yung let's build bridges, not walls. But it is not always about building bridges. You also have to build your walls. What am I talking about? Because sometimes people don't always build walls to keep others out. Ayaw mo namang i-shut out yung ibang tao kaya ka nagbe-build ng walls. But you have to because there are times it is done out of a necessity. Kailangan siya because you have to protect yourself as well. You have to protect whatever is left within you. You have to protect your inner peace. You have to protect your faith. You have to protect the Lord na meron ka sa sarili mo. Okay? First point po natin, to really break mental barriers. First, please keep yourself safe by rebuilding your walls. And in here, tingnan natin yung experience po ng mga Israelites. Nehemiah 1.3 said, And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. 
ayun po yung makikita natin sa, sa experience nila sa Nehemiah, no? Bakit ba? Alam niyo po ba na kapag walang wall, katulad ng mga Israelita, tayo, defenseless din tayo, safe din tayo. We will be in great trouble kapag hindi tayo protected ng mga walls natin. We will be living under the stress or stress. We will be very vulnerable. Sino yung mga marurupok sa atin? <laughs> Tanungin mo yung katabi mo, marupok ka ba? Na, okay. Siguro kaya vulnerable tayo or marupok because we don't have the walls of God na nagpo-protect sa atin. Isa pa ito, we lies in ruins, in disgrace, in shame, in humiliation. We feel destroyed, even defeated kapag walang walls. My dear Bible students, lahat po nang nakikinig ngayon. Let us imagine the wall of Jerusalem. Ang sabi nga sa nabasa natin kanina sa Nehemiah, nung wala yung walls, they are in great trouble. At lahat ng mga sinulat ko dito sa PowerPoint, ramdam na ramdam nila. And I want to point out as well, they were very, hindi lang sila stress, kundi nahihiya pa sila sa kalagayan nila kasi sira yung wall nila. They are living in ruins. They are in disgrace. But then, if we will rebuild our walls, ano pong mangyayari? Kapag may walls tayo, kapag may walls mga Israelites, they will feel protected. They will feel at peace. They will have defense against their enemies. They will attain again their dignity. They will feel built and established. Ganyan din po tayo. Pag meron tayong walls na ang Lord ang yumayakap at nagpoprotekta sa atin, we will feel this, we will be at peace, we will have the de- defense again. Makukuha ulit natin yung dignidad na nasira natin. We will feel built and established sa Panginoon. Ayan po yung unang point natin, why do we have to rebuild our, our walls? Another, ang sabi pa sa Nehemiah 6.16, When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid. and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Kapag may walls po tayo, mga kapatid, it symbolizes God's blessing upon, the, upon us, upon the people. Kapag naayos yung wall ng Jerusalem sa panahon nila, makikita ng ibang tao, oh, the, Lord, the Lord's blessing is with them. Natayong muli yung nasirang wall. hindi lang blessing ng Lord ang makikita, we will really see God is with them. God is with us who can be against us, sabi sa Romans. Kaya po napakahalaga to rebuild our walls. And lastly, upon rebuilding our walls, ang sabi po sa Nehemiah 2.20, the God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding, but as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. Sinasabi ito ni Nehemiah sa mga enemies niya na nag-oppose oppose sa kanilang ginagawa. When we rebuild our walls, nandiyan yung success. Hindi na tayo destroyed, hindi na tayo defeated, hindi na tayo humiliated, but we have victory sa ating Panginoon. Alam niyo po ba, Sabi ko nga, it, it's not always about building bridges. Sometimes you also have to rebuild our walls for us to be safe, to feel protected. Bakit? Think of God na sobrang concern niya sa atin, sobrang love niya sa atin. Kaya gusto din ng Lord, by rebuilding our walls, we will have this protection Okay yung well-being natin. Okay yung inner peace natin. Yan po yung unang, unang sanang makita natin dito. When we want to break mental barriers, unahin mo muna yung protection na talagang may sanggalang ka sa sarili mo. You have to rebuild your walls. Kung natatakot ka ngayon na problema ka ngayon, please rebuild your walls. Okay? So, ayan po yung unang-una. Sabi mo nga, let's rebuild our walls. Okay, ina ko na lang na sinasabi niyo, hindi ko po kayo nag Second point, how to break mental barriers. Kung kanina walls, now think of repairing your ruins. Ruins. 
Ruins. Tingnan niyo yung GIF. Ruins. Sira. Ang masaklap niya katotohanan, lahat tayo may ruin sa mga buhay natin. Second point to break mental barriers, i-repair mo muna yung sira sa loob mo. And this is the thing na nakita natin kay Nehemiah. Before the Lord will let Nehemiah do a great work outside, bago niya gawin yung wall of Jerusalem, the Lord did something great inside sa buhay ni Nehemiah. Ni-repair niya muna yung ruin sa sarili niya. We deceive ourselves if we only look what is good. Sabi nga nila, positive thinker dapat tayo. But then, uulitin ko, we deceive ourselves if we only look at what is good. Okay lang yan. Okay na yan. It is not always like that. It is not supposed to be like that. But Nehemiah teaches us by example that we must look at the broken down towers, walls, gates, and carefully studied what is wrong. Please ask yourself what is wrong. Ano bang mali? Ano ba yung kasalanan ko? It is time for you to look at what is wrong. But only if we, we, we have the heart of Nehemiah, ano yung heart niya to be used of God to set it right. Kahit nakita natin kasi yung mali, kung wala naman po sa puso natin na ipaayos ito sa Lord, wala rin. Again, when we repair our rubens, para ma-repair yan, we need to know how bad the situation was katulad ng ginaawa ni Nehemiah. Know the extent of the damage. Ayun po yung nangyari sa Nehemiah 2.15 to 16. Bago po nagsimula yung rebuilding, Anong ginawa ni Nehemiah? Nagkaroon siya ng tour sa so verses 15 to 16. Then I went up in the night by the valley and inspected the wall. Tiningnan niya muna, inat-inspect niya. And I turned back and entered by the valley gate and so return. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing. And I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, officials, and the rest who were to do the work. Anong ginawa po niya? Tiningnan muna ni Nehemiah yung ng damage, yung kung paano kasira, kung paano kabad yung situation doon sa Jerusalem. At ganyan din po tayo. Please, take a look of our lives. Magkaroon tayo ng honest review. Sa Lord naman, wala tayong may tatago. Let us have a, an, a, uh, an honest review sa ating Panginoon. Kumusta naman kaya ang buhay ko? Asaan yung mga ruins na dapat i-repair? You know what? Sa book of Nehemiah, sa chapter 3, ang daming mga words doon about repair, rebuild, at ganun din po ang gusto ng Lord sa atin. If we want to break mental barriers, i-repair muna natin yung ruins sa atin. And ang sabi dito, if someone will took a part of your life, the same way Nehemiah did, nung nag-tour siya doon sa Jerusalem, will they notice the many broken down portions in the figurative walls of your life? Ang kakita-kita ba sa mga tao yung mga sira-sirang buhay, sira-sirang walls na meron tayo? Yung iba't ibang aspect ng buhay natin na sira? Sana wag naman po. And if so, do you mind letting the Lord repair your ruins? Gusto po ba natin ipaayos sa Lord ang mga ruins natin? Ayan yung iiwan ko dito sa second point on how to break mental barriers. Because the Lord, hindi lang siya concerned sa protection natin by rebuilding, uh, rebuilding the walls on our lives. The Lord is also concerned sa mga damages sa buhay natin. Gusto din niyang tingnan ng Lord. Gusto niya ng malinis and honest review sa mga ruins ng buhay natin. Concern din po ang Lord doon. And makikita po natin, lastly, how to break mental barriers. Think of recreating your plans. Okay? Kanina, rebuilding your walls, repairing the ruins. Number three, how to break mental barriers. Think of recreating your plans. Okay, ano ba tong recreating recreating your plans? Did you know that kung nakikita po natin as we read the Bible, hindi lang the book of Nehemiah, 
we can see that God is a planning God. God is a planning God. Nagpa-plano talaga siya at meron siyang napakagandang plan dun pa lang sa salvation natin. But ito yung masaklap sa atin na mga manggagawa ng Lord. Doon tayo minsan or madalas sa underthinking. We are not really thinking about having plans sa mga paglilingkod na ginagawa natin sa Lord. Yun po yung nakakalungkot and nakaka, uh, parang nakaka-disappoint. Gagawin mo tong isang ministry ng Lord, hindi ka nagplano. Hindi po ba kahiya-hiya yun sa ating Lord? The third point is, think of recreating your plans. Siguro may plans na na-establish yung Lord sa'yo, may naiisip ka ng plans. But please, think of recreating it para the best siya, para hindi siya palpak. Think of the plans na meron ka noon na marami ka ng palpak na mga plano na nagawa. Hindi ka lang apektado, apektado ang Lord at ang ministry niya. So the third one, to break mental barriers, dapat may plano ka. May plano po tayo, mga kapatid. Ano pong ginawa ni Nehemiah dito? Kung paano siya nagplano? Ang galing ni Nehemiah, no? Kung paano siya nagplano? We have three pieces. The first one is pray. Narinig na rin ninyo ito kanina. Ay, kagabi kay Pastor Judy. Nehemiah 1.4, As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days and I continue, continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. But then, kung naririnig mo yung, ay, pray ng pray, devotion ng devotion, and wala ng power ito sa'yo, please, something is really wrong. Kapag hindi mo na tinitingnan ang prayer, itong mga basic na ito na napakahalaga at yung power niya. The first thing na ginawa ni Nehemiah sa kanyang pagpaplano of rebuild, rebuilding the wall, he really prayed. Ilang, gano'ng katagal nag-pray, nag-fast itong si Nehemiah? If you will look at the preceding chapter sa chapter 2, merong nakasulat na month of Nisan. And it is equivalent to four months. Okay? Hindi po agad-agad gumawa, gumalaw si Nehemiah. Nung narinig niya yung news, first thing na ginawa niya, nag-mourn siya, nag-fast siya, nag-pray siya for four months. Hindi yung meron tayo minsan naiisip na lang na bigla gagawin ko to para sa Lord. Pero hindi natin pinag hindi natin pinagplanuhan ng maayos. Hindi man lang natin kinonsult sa ating Lord. Hindi natin sinik yung guidance niya. Pray. Ang unang ginawa niya. At ito po, gusto ko pong i-point out dito, yung word na he, he sat down, wept, and mourned, and fast and pray. Gusto kong i-point out itong mga words na to. Alam niyo po ba na itong mga to, hindi lang siya mere emotion. Ibinalita kay Nehemiah, Nehemiah, nasira yung ano natin, yung wall natin doon sa Jerusalem. Anong reaksyon ni Nehemiah? Nang hina yung tuhod niya, umiyak siya sa Lord, nag-wep siya, magulgul siya, and nag-pray siya. But then, hindi lang natapos doon. Hindi lang mere emotion, kundi deep concern yung nangyari sa kanya. Do we have that deep concern sa gawain ng Lord? o parang ginagawa lang po nating light ang gawain ng Lord. Are we serious about the ministry of the Lord? Do we really have that deep concern, deep love, passion sa ating sa gawain ng Panginoon sa kanya mismo? Yan po yung unang makikita natin dito. At I love the term sa Nehemiah 1 na sinabi doon ni, ng, ni King, uh, ng hari doon, at sabi niya, nung nakita niya si Nehemiah na malungkot, sabi niya, it is nothing but the sorrow of the heart. Sorrow of the heart. Can you say sorrow of the heart? When we say sorrow of the heart, nandun yung deep concern, deep passion, love mo sa nangyari. Hindi lang bansa, basta emotion na nalungkot ka, ay ganitong nangyari. No, because the second letter P, recreating your plans, after praying, you have to prepare. Okay? Prepare. From that mere emotion, hindi siya pala mere emotion, kundi yung sorrow of the heart niya, ito yung nag 
push kay Nehemiah to do great work. Okay? To do the work of rebuilding Jer- the walls of Jerusalem kahit na mahirap. Pangalawang nangyari po dito o ginawa ni Nehemiah, he really prepared chapters 1 and 2. At meron akong nabasa ang sabi niya si Nehemiah is called pragmatic believer. Bakit? When we, when we say pragmatic, sa theories of education, meron din ito, no? When we say pragmatic, you are thinking more of practical practical things. You are thinking more on practicality on how will you do this thing. Nandun ka sa procedures, nandun ka sa process, pinag-iisipan mo kung paano. Hindi ka lang nandun sa what, anong gagawin ko, gagawin ko to. Pero you are also thinking about the procedures on how will you do it. And that you will really prepare. Paghahandaan mo, ano bang preparations ang ginawa ni Nehemiah? Napakaganda ng preparations niya. He prayed, he seek partners sa king, meron siya mga soldiers, nakiusap rin siya ng mga letters para hindi siya pagbabawalan ng mga uh, other kings doon. And even naghingi pa siya ng resources sa Lord. Ayan yung mga preparations niya. Ang sabi ko nga sa God's timing, four months siyang nagpray and prepare. Please, huwag tayong uh, gagalaw sa gawain ng Lord na hindi tayo handa. It is our accountability. Para bang itong katulad nito, huwag kang magle-lecture, huwag kang magpe-preach, huwag kang mag-evangelize na hindi ka talagang handa, hindi mo alam ang sasabihin mo. We are accountable sa Lord. Yan yung mahirap at nakakalungkot palagi po sa atin, hindi tayo prepared. Kaya talunan tayo, kaya nasasaktan tayo, kaya ang daming mga nararanasan natin ng negativities. We have to come prepared, nasabi dito. And, last letter P, hindi lang pray and prepared. Ang last letter P po natin in re- recreating our plans, we have to perform. From mere emotion to perform. You have to have that will to do it. Pakisabi mo nga sa katabi mo, do it. Okay, gawin natin. Hindi lang hindi ka lang nagpray, hindi ka lang nagprepare, just really do it. Wala dapat barrier, walang mental barrier na may isip ka na pipigil sa iyo. Think of Nehemaya. Ang dami pong mga barriers sa kanya. There are a lots of opposition sa Nehemiah 3:11 mababasa natin. Anong dyan si Sanbala, the Hororite, Tobiah, the servant, Jusem, the Arab, napakarami pang against. When we work, when we do the work of the Lord, maraming oppositions. Maraming against sa atin. But hindi tayo pwedeng magpapigil. We have to perform, we have to do it for the Lord. At ang sabi pa dyan, we have to despise complaints and blame game. Tingnan niyo yung pangyayari po sa, kay Nehemiah at sa mga tao sa Israel. Nung pumunta po ba si Nehemiah dun sa kanila, did he complain? O kayo, bakit din nyo ginawa itong wall na to, ang daming taon na na nakaganito? O bakit kayo ganito kasi kayo hindi nyo kayang gawin to? He did not complain. Hindi niya uh, blame name. Ang Tagalog ng blame. Uh, hindi niya blame name yung mga tao doon na bakit hindi niyo ginawa yung work na to, kundi nandun siya para i-encourage sila na gawin. He really performed. When we perform, are we giving our best? From that deep concern na meron tayo, do we have the commitment to act sa gawain ng Lord? Or baka naman masyado na tayong hayahay bilang mga believers ng Lord, bilang mga servants ng Lord? Sobrang hayahay na natin, puro pahinga tayo at hindi na tayo nagpe-perform sa gawain ng Lord. I know I sound parang uh, parang ano no, parang nanermon talaga. But this is the reality, my dear uh, fellow believers and workers and Lord. Sometimes we are not performing. Pray lang tayo ng pray, Lord, sana ganito. Minsan nga, di pa tayo nagpe-prepare. Lalo na hindi na tayo nagpe-perform. Kasi ganito. Kasi ayoko mag-perform. Kasi ganito. Ayoko mag-perform may against. Ayoko mag-perform. Sila na lang. Magpo-complain ka na lang. Mag-ibiblain mo na lang yung iba. 
when you say, or when Nehemiah said, I will rise and build. Totoong sasabihin rin ni Satan. He will say, I will arise and oppose. You say, I will rise and build. Satan will say, I will arise and oppose. Ganun po ang gagawin talaga ni Satan. Hindi natin matatanggal yung mga barriers, yung mga oppositions na yan. Hindi natin, I mean, mapipilit na wag mangyari yung mga yan. But then we can do something about those. Kahit na merong mga oppositions, kahit na maraming mga hadlang, if you think about it, do it. After you pray, you prepare, please perform. Do it. Kapag ginawa mo ang best mo, ginawa natin ang best po natin na talagang i-prepare ito. Honestly, uh, mahina rin ang loob ko. Ganyan ako simula ba nung bata. You cannot even imagine na nakakapagsilita ako ng ganito. Because nahihiya talaga ako. I have a lot of friends na sinabihan na natatakot talaga ako, nahihiya ako. If wala ang Lord, hindi ito magagawa. Hindi ko ito magagawa. Hindi ito mangyayari. But when you do your part na nag-prepare ka, humingi ka ng guidance sa Lord, and then you perform it, nandyan ng Lord. Nandyan ng Lord. So please do it. Okay, so yun po yung tatlong paraan how to break mental barriers and how to recreate our plans. Don't forget to pray, prepare, and perform. Uulitin ko how to break our mental barriers. Think of rebuilding your walls, think of repairing your ruins, and think of recre- recreating your plans. Ayan yung tatlong R na gusto kong iwan sa first objective natin on how to break mental barriers. Are you still there? Yes! Okay, if you are still there, meron pa tayong pangalawa. <laughs> Don't worry, meron pa tayong time. So, tapos na tayo sa first objective. Let's now go on to our second objective. How to achieve greater goals. Nina Walls, ang pinakita ko po sa inyo. Right now, I want you to look at the gates. How to achieve greater goals, ang pinakakit na nakita po natin sa Nehemiah, keep watch of your gates. Pakisabi gates. Gates. Anina wall, ngayon gates. Bakit ba gates? Because katulad ng gates, literally, ang mind natin is the entrance and exit. Okay? Entrance and exit po ang isip natin. Kaya kailangan natin i-guard din, hindi lang yung heart, kundi pati yung mind natin. Ano yung pumapasok dyan? Ano yung dapat ilabas dyan? So, the very key to achieve greater goals, in line pa rin sa breaking mental barriers, is to keep watch of our gates. Katulad ng nangyari sa Nehemiah chapter 3. You know what? Ang ganda ng Nehemiah chapter 3. It's all about build, build, build. Work, work, work. Perform, perform, perform. Nandun nakasulat yung details kung paano sila gumalaw. Kung paano nila ginawa. Hindi lang sila nag-rebuild ng walls, nag-rebuild din sila ng gates. So I will share with you yung nabasa ko sa chapter 3 na sampung gates na kailangan nating i-watch, i-repair sa mga buhay natin. The first gate po is the sheep gate. The verses 3, 1, and 32. Sheep gate. Ano nga ba tong sheep gate na to? Bakit meron? It talks about the cross. The sacrifice that was made for our sins, the Lamb of God, yung pinapakita po, yung sinisignify nitong sheep gate, the Lamb of God mismo. You know what? Magiging mas madali po sa atin to break mental barriers and to achieve greater goals kung binabalik-balikan, uulitin ko, binabalik-balikan palagi natin ang cross. Why? The cross is the starting place for your strength. Doon po tayo sa cross, sumuhugot ng lakas sa buhay natin. If we will not think of the cross, mahina tayo. The sheep gate is uh, reminding us about the cross, the Lamb of God, the sacrifice made doon para sa mga kasalanan natin. Unang-una, kung marami ka mang iniisip, mas isipin mo to, kaibigan, kapatid. Think of the sheep gate. 
Think of the cross. It is the starting place of your strength sa buhay natin. Mahina tayo kapag nakalimutan na natin ang cross. At para bang sinasabi mo dyan, dahil sinasabi mo na uh, strength mo ang Lord, you are putting ego, yourself, you are canceling yourself, your ego, your self-interest, your pride, and you are having or getting strength sa Lord natin. Ego to that strength to life. Ayan po yung nangyayari. If we keep watch the sheep gate of our lives, mangyayari po ito yun sa atin. Magkakaroon tayo ng strength. The second gate is the fish gate. Da, verses 3, 3 to 5. Ang sabi dito, ang fish gate po, yung kung kanina yung sheep gate, dito po dinadaan yung mga ships, okay, for ano, for animal sacrifice. Sa fish gate naman, it was called fish gate kasi yung mga fishermen from Galilee will bring their catch. Lahat ng mga huli nila dito idadala sa fish gate na tinatawag. Ano nga ba ang fish? We are reminded of the verse Mark 1.17 that we are also called to be the fishers of man. Una, kung naisip na natin yung cross ang ating Panginoong Jesus the Lamb of God. Second, gusto din ng Lord that we think of being a witness of Christ. Kumusta na po ang pag-witness natin sa ating Panginoon? Kumusta na ang ating evangelism life? Kumusta na yung ating napakagandang responsibility and privilege at the same time to tell others about Jesus? Yung fish gate po, pinapaalala yung ating pong kailangan na da- dapat gawin bilang witness ng ating Panginoon ang pagpapakilala sa kanya sa mga unbelievers, ang pagpo-proclaim ng gospel of salvation, gospel of the grace of God sa ibang tao na hindi nila alam ito. Ayan po ang pinapaalala sa atin ng Lord. See, ang dami natin kailangang isipin, pero puro negative yung naisip natin. Why not think of the sheep gate? Why not think of the fish gate? Meron palang utos ng Lord sa atin, may pinapagawa pala sa atin ng Lord to think of being a witness for Him, to tell others about Jesus. The third gate is what we call the old gate. Okay, so verses 3, 6 to 12. Check nyo lang po sa mga Bibles ninyo. At meron po tayong pinapakita dito na truth is old. Truth is gold as well. Ano ba yung sinisignify nitong old gate na to? It is the truth. And hindi tayo may establish yung buhay po natin if we do not know about the truth of the Word of God. Madalas kasi sa atin, ayaw na natin sa old. Okay? Lalo na sa mga kabataan, we want new and latest. Pero, yan yung kadalasan na dangerous. Ang sabi sa Jeremiah 6.16, Thus is the Lord stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths ancient paths, old paths, where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find the rest for your souls. Ano sinasabi dito? Walk in the old path, and you will find the rest for your souls. The old gate reminds us of the truth. Yung napakagandang mystery na pinagkatiwala kay Apostle Paul, pinagkatiwala na sa atin itong truth na to, and what are we doing about this truth? This gold truth, this old truth. Hindi lang po evangelism, kundi telling about others the dispensation and fellowship of the mystery. The old gate. Think of the old gate. Think of the truth. The fourth one, we have the dung gate. Dung, no? Dung. <laughs> dung sa so verse 314. Dito po nilalabas lahat ng refuse rubbish, lahat ng filth, lahat ng basura, lahat ng dumi. May dung gate. Okay? At para din sa mga buhay natin, if we will not have this dung gate, we will be in bad shape. Hindi tayo naglalabas, no? Kung masaka yung shape natin, literally. Okay? And kumusta yung health natin kapag hindi natin nilalabas yung toxic sa katawan natin? Do you want to smell to heaven, to God, and to men? Gusto mo bang maging smelly ka, mabaho ka sa harapan ng Lord at sa ibang tao? 
please think of the dung gate. Itapon na natin yung mga dapat itapon, yung mga filth, rubbish, lahat ng refuse na meron tayo. It talks about hindi lang construction, hindi lang construction ng wall, ng gate, kundi cleaning ng buhay natin. Ayan po yung sinisignify ng dung gate. Please think of this one. Dung gate. Remove or get rid of dirty of the garbages sa mga buhay natin. The fifth one, before I go with the fifth one, let's review. Ano na po yung mga gates na napag-usapan natin na kailangan natin na i-keep watch? The first one, Sheep gate. The th second, Fish gate. Third, All gate. Fourth, Okay, and the fifth one is the valley gate. When we say valley gate, so 3.13 verse, it talks about humbling trials. Ano ba yung nire-remind sa atin ng valley gate? Think of your trials na ginagawang way ng ating Lord sa atin yan para humble tayo. Humbling trials. Valley type experiences used by the Lord even for our personal growth. Hindi lang tayo tinuturuan ng Lord na magpakumbaba when we go under trials and the valleys of our lives, kundi it is for our personal growth. Kung walang valley gate, if you will not look at those trials sa valley gate natin na makakatulong sa atin, talagang manghihina tayo. But if we will look that those trials and yung valley gate sa buhay natin na makakatulong sa atin, it is for our growth. Parang nakasulat dyan, sabi nga dito, you must have your low opinion. Low opinion of ourselves, but high opinion of God. Ayan po yung tinuturo ng valley gate sa atin. We undergo trials, we undergo humbling times, we, under, we undergo also personal growth sa pamamagitan ng mga yan. And uulitin ko po, please let us have low opinion of ourselves and even high opinion of our, our God. So gusto din ng low, Lord ng lowliness of mind and meekness of heart. Lowliness of mind and meekness of heart. The sixth one is the fountain gate sa verse 3.15. The living waters yung tinutukoy dito and the Holy Spirit that cleanse our lives and empower us for our Christian life. Kung meron ka ng valley gate, meron ka ng dung gate, meron din tayong fountain gate. It talks about the empowering work of the Holy Spirit, okay, sa mga buhay natin bilang mga anak ng Diyos. And something uh, interesting yung nangyari dito sa Fountain Gate. Isinulat po sa verse natin na hindi nasira ang fountain. Nasira yung gate, nasira yung wall, pero yung fountain itself hindi. It's still standing. It never break down. Bakit? There is power sa Holy Spirit. Hindi siya matitinag. And yan din, kailangan po natin ng Holy Spirit. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit para maging malakas, matatag tayo. We have to be empowered. Yan po yung pinapaalala ng fountain gate sa atin, ng Holy Spirit sa mga buhay natin. Huwag maisipin na mahina ka. You have the Holy Spirit in you na nagpapalakas sa inyo. Meron po tayong Holy Spirit within us. The seventh gate, the water gate, 326. Sorry ha, parang hindi ko na na-chronological arrange to. The water gate, 326. Ang sabi sa Ephesians 5.26, Having washed her by the water of the word, Psalms 199 says that it's only through God's word that we can be clean. Ang sinisignify po ng water gate, kung kanina sa fountain yung Holy Spirit, Now, sa water gate is the word of God. Okay? Na magkakaroon daw po tayo ng kalinisan, ng cleansing, ng water gate through the word of God mismo. Na mawawash tayo through the word of God and through that, we will keep ourselves from sinning, from all the rubbish, kundi makiklean ng buhay natin. Uh, and always think of the water. Ito yung number one and the best solvent. Cleaning yung water. At ganyan din po ang word of God sa buhay natin. It will clean our lives. And sa so verse 8 is the east gate. Itong east gate na to sa 329. Alam niyo po bang nakaharap ito sa rising sun? Kaya nga is, no? 
it signifies the gate of hope. Kung sa prophecy program, it talks about the second coming of Christ. Okay? Sa prophecy program natin sa East Gate, sa Zechariah 14.4, that the Lord will return to the on toward the Mount Olives. At itong East Gate na to, nakaharap siya sa Mount Olives sa second coming ng, ng Panginoong Hesusyon. But us, the body of Christ, our blessed hope is the rapture. Our blessed hope, yung ating hope mismo sa langit. Yung rupture mismo. Kung nangihina ka, napapagod ka na sa mundong ito, think of our blessed hope. Think of the rising sun. Think of the east gate that we have in the Lord. Kung namomroblema ka ngayon, please think of our blessed hope. Next naman, don't worry. 9 and 10 na lang ito. The 9 and 10, we have the horse gate. 328. It is a symbol of warfare. We wrestle against the forces of darkness. Ephesians 6.12 Horse gate. Bakit may horse gate? Sabi po dito, it, clo- it is close to the king's tables. And yung king, after ng war and before war, chinecheck sila ng king. If ready ba silang makipagdigma, okay ba yung digmaan? And it is a symbol of warfare. Think of that we are always Uh, sa mga battles natin sa buhay. Meron warfare palagi inside sa atin, sa sarili natin, may war sa other people, sa world, sa sin. Lahat, ang daming warfare. And itong horse gate po, pinapaalala sa atin na dapat handa tayong makibuno. We rest, we wrestle, we must go against the forces of darkness. And lastly, we have the master gate. 331. Ano itong Master Gate? It, also, it is also called Mifad or Examination Gate. Ano po yung tinutukoy nito? It is for judgment. And we think of judgment para sa body of Christ as the Bema Seat of Christ, Judgment Seat of Christ. As spoken in 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15, 2 Corinthians 5, 10. Please, lastly, think of the Master Gate. Let us stop and reevaluate ourselves. Kung haharap na po ba ako sa number one and only judge na, na ang Panginoong Jesus, if He will evaluate myself, if it test niya yung mga ginagawa ko, yung mind ko, yung intents ng puso ko, kalugod-lugod po kaya ito, kapuri-puri kaya sa Lord, let us think of the master gate na merong examination doon. Let us think of the Bema Seat of Christ. Imbes sa pagtuunan natin ng pansin ng ibang mga makamundong mga ibang mga bagay, let us think of heavenly things. Let us think of this Bema Seat of Christ. At ayun po yung sampung gates na meron sa Nehemiah na kailangan din natin pag-isipan. How to achieve greater goals? We have to keep watch of our gates. I-guard natin yung gates natin. Ibig sabihin yung mind natin. And we have this 10 gates to review. Sheep gate, think of the Lamb of God, think of the cross, humugot ka ng lakas doon. Fish gate, think of our responsibility and even a privilege to witness for Christ. Evangelism. Nag-evangelize pa kaya ako? Old gate, think of the fruit, our solid foundation. Yung mystery na pinangahawakan natin. The valley gate. Lahat ng trials ng buhay natin that teaches us humility and personal growth. Dung gate. Ano ba yung filth, yung garbage sa buhay ko na kailangan ko nang tanggalin? Fountain gate. Filled with the Holy Spirit. F- filled ba ako ng Holy Spirit? Yung Holy Spirit pa ang nangunguna sa akin o yung old sinful nature pa rin? Water gate. The God's Word. Horse gate. Spiritual warfare. East gate. Blessed home. Master gate. We have to examine ourselves. Ayan po yung sampung gates na kailangan natin i-watch sa mga isip natin to have to achieve greater goals. And to end this one, conclusion. Kanina, sa first objective natin, how to break mental barriers, we have think of rebuilding your walls, repairing your ruins, recreating your plans. I love the prefix re. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng prefix na re? Then you know that? 
yung prefix na repo, ang ibig sabihin niya ay again or anew. If the Lord is giving you the re of your life, the Lord is giving you another chance, another opportunity. Kaya nga kailangan po natin to break our mental barriers to rebuild our walls, to repair our ruins, to recreate our plans sa ating Panginoon. Gusto niya na mabigyan tayo ng panibagong pagkakataon. A new life, a new chance of Let us humble ourselves. Let us examine ourselves sa mga natutunan natin din nila. Oo nga, Lord, ang dami pong pagkukulang po na nagawa sa inyo. Ang dami po pong kasalanan sa inyo. Ang dami pong mga hindi dapat ginawa. I mean, hindi dami ko dapat gawin pero hindi ko ginawa. Ang dami pong pinalampas na opportunity. And now, right now, you are giving me the re of my life to start a new sa buhay ko. Magre-rapture na. What if blessed hope na agad? Yung estate na agad. Hindi pa ako handa. Ang dami pong dapat gawin para sa Lord. At least if you are hearing this one, huwag natin sayangin yung pagkakataon to serve the Lord. IGBI students, serving the Lord is the best decision sa buhay. <laughs> Naiyak ako. Kung meron gusto mag-quit sa inyo, huwag kayo mag-quit. Para sa Lord. Kung meron gustong bumigay, please wag. Mahirap mag-serve sa Lord, pero rewarding, satisfying. Kung meron gustong mag-serve sa Lord, mag-enroll sa Bible School, mag-enroll ka na. Huwag mong hayaan na matapos na yung grace
please help us, Lord, to have this opportunity na hindi masayang sa mga buhay namin, na makapaglingkod pa more para sa inyo, more pa sa inyo, Lord, at tapusin na namin yung pagiging hayahay namin sa ministry, kundi let us think of on how we serve the Lord. Help us not to overthink negative and worldly things. Help us not to underthink you, underthink your ministry, kundi po yung tamang pag-iisip towards sa pag-iilingkod namin sa inyo. Ama, maraming maraming salamat po. Salamat po sa pagkakataon na ito. Salamat po sa mga Bible students, sa lahat ng nakinig. Salamat po sa mga salita ninyo, Panginoon. Sa inyo po ang pinakamataas na papuri at pasasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus namang dakilang tagapagligtas. Amen. Thank you and to God be the glory po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, thank you, thank you sa pakikinig.